Hi guys, this is Mona from Rock City Tumblers, and I was going to do a tutorial on the glitter ink pens that um, are kind of all the craze right now. So I have watched several other tutorials and kind of picked things up as we go, and I'm super grateful for the other ladies who took the time to do tutorials. So I was just going to show you this is how I do mine, and hopefully this helps helps you guys. So, um, first thing, this is what we're talking about on the, the glitter pens. These are, um, available on Amazon. You can also get them at most Walmarts. Let me get the package for you. So these came from, um, crap, these are not the right ones. These are the right ones. These I need to take back. So these are not the right ones. Notice that um, these have this bulgy base to them. The um, the pick and pull people must have grabbed the wrong ones. These are the correct ones. These are Paper Mate Ink Joy Gel Ink Pens. So the reason why these are the best is because they're one solid barrel, and you can pull the um little clip off without hurting the barrel any okay so paper make ink joy notice that these both came from walmart and there's two different sizes this one had 14 pens and this one had 10 so try to look and see which is the best price divide the price by the number of pens and that will be your cost per pen so um try to see what what the best price is for those because these are came from amazon this is a 10 pack same thing, medium point, ink joy gel. So you can get these both on Amazon and get the colors. So um, there is something important to think about if you're gonna do the colors versus the um, black. So there's a little part on the pen, the very tip, that um, I don't, I don't epoxy or glitter or anything this little part right here I have seen some other ladies do that um, but if you're gonna do a design um, that part is gonna be black so if you have a really pretty unicorn or tie-dye um, pin then when you're finished with it you're screwing on a black end like this and so that might throw off your um, your design a little bit but for if you want to do like a pencil um, on there. then the black is perfect for the end so there are times that black is great and other times that it's not so um that's when you're buying also the ink in here is colored so it's whatever the color it is um and uh so you, if they want a uh, colored like a green color ink then um you know that's a little bonus too um you can buy refills for this i haven't really found a link for a refills for this but I do I personally love these inner gel liquid gel pens um, and I took the refill out of it and put it in the um, ink joy So, um, this is the inner gel. You can stick it in here. Oop, wrong end. It's got any paper anywhere. So you can see it sticks out. Just like the um, regular one would be and I actually prefer the ink pen tip on the inner gels better um, so see it writes just as good so this is the um, inner gel 
um, liquid ink, and you can get these refills at Office Depot, you can get them on Amazon, and I'll try to put a link here and a screenshot of it. So I'm going to put that inner gel back in the inner gel pen before I get them all mixed up. And then stick this one back. Okay, so now that we've covered the pen, the black versus the blue, this is blue. So see how the color is not black. So when you get the colored, um, the, the ink inside matches it. Okay, so you're going to put Walmart, Amazon. I don't know if Target has them. I haven't looked at Target. So um, those are things to think about. All right, so we're going to move on. I'm going to show you how to hold them on the stick and what kind of sticks are great to use. So the number one question I see is how do I hold them on a stick? And so this is what I use. I use a chopstick. So the end of the chopsticks that I have are kind of almost cubed and um, they fit perfectly inside. I don't know if there's a certain brand that I have. I can try to find the link to them or if this is like any chopstick at any Chinese restaurant. So, so that's how I keep them on. You can see it's not, it's not falling off. All right, so now um, there's two things that I use to kind of hold them up with. And um, I'm going to show you now how to make the box to hold them up. And I'll be back and I'll show you how to turn, put them on a turner. So for these glitter pens, I'm going to use this to make a holder. So I need to drill a hole in there. This is just a bark box. It's just real sturdy. So to hold the, the pins on the chopsticks on the turner, I first tried to make my own um, extension with a pull noodle and just a, a pipe turner end. And so I shoved the pull noodle in and um, I marked three spots. I didn't want too many. And then I um, shoved the chopstick down in three different places. So that way I can um, epoxy and decorate the pen over here over my workspace and then when it's ready to be turned I can stick it in here and let it turn without having to try to epoxy around the others. So that's how I did it. It's not the best method. Um, it works. They do seem to slip out of here. So I don't know if I could put some um, little bands of hot glue or something on to help them grip a little bit. Also, my husband um, saw my pain 
and he took that same pool noodle, a piece of that pool noodle, and he glued it onto an end that fits onto my turner. And so then I did the same thing I marked. I think I only did two on these because I didn't want the foam to wear out as fast. So I put it in. And these do seem to stay a little bit better. Um, I might be able to wrap something around here to kind of give it a little bit of strength once this starts to wear out. Um, but I've seen other ladies where they just physically tape the, um, the stick, the dowel, whatever they use, to, um, to something round, like a tumbler or even just the arm, and they just epoxy around it. So there's, there's different ways to do it. This was one way, um, you can get, you know, those ends if, figure out what end your turner has, and you can do that too. For the sticks, um, we kind of talked about the chopsticks in the little last clip that I showed. Um, you can also use, a, I think, a quarter inch dowel. Um, I think they have those at Walmart and um, the craft shop, things like that. I first tried a bamboo skewer jab here, but it's just not thick enough. You might be able to tape several of them together um, to make it work, but um, the original bamboo skewer wasn't, wasn't thick enough. Um, and I have seen the original lady who did the first tutorial, she um, did the end of a pencil, like the eraser end, she was able to put it in. Right, um, so, let's see, anything else? Okay, um, and things to know about these pens, and we're, we're gonna cover that in just a second, is one of the ends, the end with the clicker part, is rounded so um, that that end doesn't fit as well into objects um, I use the, the the tip that has the ink in it I use that end when I'm putting it on the, the chopstick you could do this with it but it just goes through so it's not the chopstick really worked because of that thick end so um, I don't know if these are special chopsticks or what but that's just what I used so this is what the turner arm looks like on my turner um, it's glued on this uh, pool noodle and so I would epoxy this ink pen and then I come over here and I put it in the little hole turn it on and it just slowly rotates now they do have a tendency to fall out it's not the perfect method but it works and um, then I can slide the second one in like that and just keep an eye on it, check on it every couple hours, just make sure it hasn't split out. I'm still working on making it a little bit more grippy, but uh, that's how I get it to, to stay on my turner. That, that PVC pipe goes all the way through that pool noodle and these are probably just Dollar Tree pool noodles. Probably hard to find right now because it's January. So when you get your pens in the mail or you go buy them at Walmart, whatever, you're going to want to prep them. So how I prep them is, of course, you take them out of the package. So I'm going to need um, needle nose pliers. They make this easier. You can get, get these at Walmart, Harbor Freight, Dollar Tree probably has them back um, where the craft foam is and all the, the fake flowers, things like that. Needle nose pliers. And then I also use an X-Acto knife. Some people would just use sandpaper. So I'm going to take the, um, the end off here and I just stick it in something like a cup. And for the red one, it's easy to tell what color ink the red is. But you're gonna put all of the insides, whoa. You're going to put all of the insides in this cup here uh, to where you just have this tube part. So just know that you'll need to be able to tell what color is what to match the tip later. If it doesn't want to come out, just kind of do that real hard and it comes out. Also note that that little 
inner piece is the same color. Um, it doesn't usually matter. Um, however, this one is so light that if that inner piece was black in color, you would be able to see it. So just something small to watch out for because that chamber is clear. Okay, so you just put those off to the side. You're not going to need those until you're finished with the pens. Okay, so now that we have the guts taken out of the pens, we want to remove this little shirt clip. So how you do that is you take your needle nose pliers, and you grab a hold of it and twist it around. And it'll break off. That's trash. So you can do a bunch at one time. And that'll save you from having to do this a bunch. Okay, now that you have your clips turned off of those, um, it's time to get rid of this little raised piece of plastic that's left. So usually that gets left on there. And so um, I carefully take an X-Acto knife and just sort of saw it off. Um, other people just take some sandpaper and sand it smooth. Completely up to you. Just be super careful if you do the X-Acto knife method. You can be super careful with this. If you're not comfortable using a blade, then use the sander, sandpaper. Always cut away from you, never cut toward you. And it's recommended that you have some sort of eye protection because little pieces of plastic do go flying. Okay, and there's also a tiny little divot that you can try to get to, but I don't really worry about that. It's where the clip's at. Alright, now you're ready to finish prepping these. Okay, to prep these, um, it is important to note that this here is um, like a very soft plastic. Um, it's not hard like this here. So you don't want to sand too hard, but you do want to sand it to give it a little bit of a grip. Um, for example, this one is my personal pen. This is one of the first ones that I made. And... I did not sand it. I was just seeing what would happen, seeing if I wanted to make these. And there was a little bit of blob on the inside of the pen. And when I shoved the little clicker part in, it broke the blob off. And it also broke off that part of the glitter. So that tells me that I really do need to prep and possibly even have a primer on there, putting straight epoxy onto that soft plastic may not be the best idea. So to sand, um, I've just got 1200 grit. That's super fine. Um, you could probably use like a 200, 400 grit. Um, and I just gently, you just over sink. I don't like to get them wet because I don't want the insides to be wet. But um, just gently just kind of scrub it up a little bit. You can see here. It's not clear anymore. You want to make sure you get that rounded edge that we talked about already. If you sand too hard, you'll start seeing the um, almost a rubber, not really a plastic, start to come off. So there's um, just kind of a fine in between sanding that you'll do to that. You definitely want to get the end down here as well so that the epoxy has a good adhesion. You also want to make sure your hands are super clean while you're doing this because if um, you have lotion or any kind of oils all over your hand, then it's um, getting on the pen as well. Alright, so I'll sand all of these and I'll be back. So after I finish sanding, I am... Um, you can wash them with water, but um, I don't prefer that. 
I just clean them really well with um, a baby wipe and let them dry. And you only want to use one baby wipe for every two or three. Also wash my hands really well and always when you do any kind of sanding, there's particles in the air so it's good to wear a mask. Okay, so now that we've um, taken the clips off and we have sanded and prepped them, we are ready to paint them. So um, if I was going to put blue glitter on this, I probably wouldn't paint it. I would just put a very, very light coat of epoxy on there and use that as the adhesive and sprinkle the blue glitter on top, such as this one. This one is a purpley color and the tip would match the blue of the glitter. So, um, however, when you're doing something like this pencil, this pencil is black underneath because the tip is black. So trying to get this yellow to be super light um, would take several, several, several coats of glitter. So it's good to paint. So now I found that acrylic paint doesn't really want to dry very well for me. I don't know if it's my humidity here. I'm in Arkansas. So spray paint works best. However, um, I only need the very tip top edge of it spray painted. I don't need the whole the whole part. So what I do, because the tip is um, curved, is I spray paint just the tip. Put them on my chopsticks, take them outside, and just spray paint the tip. Let those dry really, really well. And then for the rest of my pencil, this is for a pencil. Um, if I'm going to do the pencil one, I use vinyl to cover it. So this part will be gold. And then up here will be silver. I'm going to gently press that down where there's no bubbles. Make sure you squish it really good so that it gets a good seal. Okay, and now I can put black here, I mean uh, gold here for the wood of the pencil, and um, silver here. So I have a little piece that's my guide. So I'll cut some silver that's that size. And I try to line it up. There's a little part from the clip. There's like two little hearts that used to be. So I try to line it up with that to keep it straight. And I'll put the black or the gold on the end. Now if you want to get fancy and have it um, do the zigzag you can. I, I didn't do that. Not yet anyway. And I don't want this on the very 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 edge because I want the epoxy to have something to hold on to. So I'm going to give it just a smidge. We 
There you go. So you can trim that if you need to. You could also pre-cut these so they're real straight on your Cricut or Silhouette. There we go. So that is a pencil. So now on my first coat of epoxy, I will use um, like an opal some people call it a cheek glitter, just an opal glitter, and it'll give all of this um, a nice glittery shine. You can also um, Mod Podge yellow glitter here, um, now that you have your lines, things like that, if you'd like. Um, this one was a lot harder. I ended up doing the, um, trying to spray paint each piece, didn't work. I tried to hand paint each piece, didn't work. And so I ended up using vinyl for this part. And vinyl for this part and it worked great so I just decided I could use vinyl for all of it and save me that time and I haven't seen anyone share their tip with that so I thought I'd share my tip with that um, if you're wondering I just cut rectangles out they are four inches by 1.5 inches and then I just eyeball the other two pieces so that's how I do my um, pencils so now so um, here's another tip on the pencil tumblers I have these fabric scissors that cut zigzag so I was gonna see if I could get it to cut yeah there we go so um, there's your zigzag on your vinyl for your pencil um, without having to use your Cricut to cut the zigzag. to the top okay now you get the zigzag So now if you were going to do a full color on top of the black, you can spray paint it with white paint with primer. Let it dry really good. It might take more than one coat to cover the, the, the color of the black very well. You can also use this Dixie Belle Slick Stick. Um, and it bonds really well and it's a good base coat. So let me get my holder. Stick it on my chopstick. Always kind of fly it around, make sure it's going to stay on there really well. I don't like spray painting. I try not to spray paint if I don't have to. This just takes just a wee bit. Do a sponge brush. So you can see how this would take a few coats to really cover that blue. The slick stick has a really good um, bonding agent in it that will bond really well to this plastic and rubber that's on the pens. 
You also want to make sure that you get the very edge very, really well because um, you can still see that black or whatever color you're trying to cover. So um, to make the pencil less thick, because you would need less glitter, if you could spray paint the pen, sorry, the pen, um, the color of the glitter, um, like you typically do with the epoxy method, then that means you'd use less glitter and the ink pen won't end up being so thick. Because just like with your tumbler, you're going to need the pen to be good and smooth, which would probably be two coats of epoxy before you put on your decal and then another layer of epoxy on top of the decal. So um, you can imagine that the pens can get quite chunky, especially if your glitter is um, anything a larger cut glitter. This is a .015 size glitter. So this one is quite chunky. It still writes well, but um, it is a little bit bulky. And I want to make sure I get the top really, really well so that that epoxy will bind to the slick stick and not chip off on my pen. All right, so I'll do another coat of this and we'll be back. Hi guys, it's Mona. I'm back. So I've got some epoxy mix. This is probably way too much. Um, it was 20 mils, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ink pens. I'm going to do green on one, and then I'm going to do this opal, um, kind of like a cheek glitter on the other. So I'm going to start out with the green so that I can mix the, um, opal glitter into the rest. Rest of the epoxy. Alright, so to coat your pen, this is what a lot of questions come in. You're going to do super, super light and you're going to just going to like barely, like, um, You're just going to barely um, rub it up to the top to cover the top. Make sure it's on your chopstick or your dowel really good. I like to swing it around. No, it's not going to fall off. And then um, for this end down where the ink would come out, I just, I'm just going to pull up. I'm not going to use very much at all so it doesn't um, drip over the edge and kind of lock it to this... Um, walk it to this chopstick. So I'm just going to dab my finger in just very, very lightly with the epoxy. Super, super thin, just like you would do the, um, the epoxy method for a tumbler. You can get that to spread all around really, 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 really well. You can see how I'm just going up to the top. I'm not I'm not pulling back from the top. I'm just going up. So it's not actually covering any up there until I bend my finger in. So if you use fast side epoxy, it's probably gonna set up on you before you get very many of these done. So I do not recommend fast set. For this unless you just have one that you're doing and maybe you're you had some epoxy left over after you did one tumbler so everybody asks how do you not get it to go inside the ink pen you just be very careful that's how and you could probably pull the rest down So 
So I started in the middle and then worked my way to the top edge and I worked my way to the bottom edge. So you can see the shine. I don't know if y'all can see that reflected. So I could check the shine to see if I missed any spots. And I only use that finger. So if I'm real careful, I can still keep using this one glove. So we're just gonna sprinkle. Hopefully I can see that. It helps if you go long ways. You don't use as much glitter. This is a little bit bigger of a cut. The finer cuts work better. And if I had painted this green first, it would have worked a lot better. But I don't have any light green spray paint. So I can do another coat on that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the turner and I'll show you all that in just a minute. So I'm gonna use um, this Neverland from Glitter on the Gulf for my, actually, I think I'm going to use, um, Glitter on the Gulf White Coral Dust. So this looks like the same color as Neverland, except this one is finer. It's a smaller cut of glitter, so it's going to work better on these tumblers, on these, uh, I don't know why I keep saying that, these pens. I'm going to go ahead and mix it into the epoxy, and this is just like an eyeball thing. We just want to give this uh, tumbler the illusion of having glitter because we cheated and used vinyl instead. I wouldn't say cheated, I would say we were smart. I have used too much, but we will see. So you can always tell what it's going to look like. What does it look like on the um, on the stick? That might be just enough. Okay, because it's going to be a really thin layer. So we're going to do the same thing on these. Making sure it's recording. doesn't fall off. I'm gonna dab in there. Yeah, that's perfect. So if y'all have not used Neverland or this um, white coral dust, you definitely check it out. So pretty. But the um, finer cuts aren't going to show up. They're not going to be as thick on your um, pencil or ink pen, whatever you want to call this. So they work really well. Very, very light coat. Work in the middle and work your way to the top. Spreading it all around. And because it's a smaller cut of glitter, this will be should be ready for a decal after this first coat. Instead of needing a couple of coats like a thicker glitter would need. So here's the top. Just very, very, very lightly. Somebody asked how do you do the top without getting it to go inside. Just be very careful. You'll spend more time trying to clean up the inside than just being careful to begin with. So this one I want to make sure I get that little lip that I left. 
so that the vinyl is good and sealed on to the pen. If you mix up too much epoxy, it might settle or it might harden in the container before you're finished. So you don't want to mix up too much because this does take a little bit of time to get this spread out. And you can check your shine to see how well you've coated. See where your epoxy is. So there's one pencil. So I'm gonna put this on the turner. And I'll move on. And I'll speed this up and then show you what they look like on the turner. So this is an all glitter one, pretty much, and this one is the cheat method. So it works, it's a lot easier. I'm going to take you over and show you what's going on on the turners. So this is all of the pens on the turners. So these are the ones that my husband made that he glued them on. And then this is the one that I made that I just kind of stuck the pull needle onto an arm. And so um, I'm going to try to do something to tie around there to just to kind of hold the uh, chopsticks in place a little bit more. Um, just so they don't fall out because they have fallen, fallen out in the past. I'm not positive why they start to slide. But they do. So, so it ended up... Hey guys, so if I'm further th thinking about it, I want to go to bed. So I ended up wrapping some electrical tape around the whole pull noodle, pull noodle really, really, really tight. I tried string, but I just didn't think that that was going to be tight enough. So um, I ended up with the electrical tape. That was an easy fix. And I feel like these are in really, really, really well. Another thing I want to point out on your turners is when you are sliding in the pencils don't push or pull really hard on that turner arm because you will break your motors so those are just things to think about all right well i'm gonna go to bed and i'll update y'all in the morning see how these turn out bye guys good morning friends so these have been spinning overnight and they did not fall off the turner because of the extra um tape that i wrapped around the foam the pull needle so I was going to show you what they look like. So here is one of the pencils. So that one had vinyl. Let me get it to focus. That one had vinyl on the, underneath. Then I used um, glitter in the epoxy to make it look like a glitter. Pencil, it's very sparkly. You can see that. And then the top doesn't have epoxy all on, on the inside. So this is nice and smooth. Put you on the, um, I'll show you how to reassemble them, see what it looks like. Okay, so for this one, it's nice and smooth. There's one little divot here where the vinyl stood up, so if I was going to put my decal on it, I would put it over here, then do another layer of um, epoxy, maybe with glitter in it, but um, that glitter on the Gulf White Coral Dust was a great additive, adds uh, glitter to everything, 
uh, without making it chunky at all. So you can see that these just pull right off of the um, chopstick. So I would fish out my pieces. Of course you want to let this epoxy completely cure because um, if you were to start using it today, the epoxy will leach into your hand and could cause a reaction. So just like with your tumblers, let these um, cure for three days or so before. And so here's the pieces. Now this is where some people have trouble when they put the clicker part back in. If they have any epoxy, on the inside of that that's kind of hanging over that clicker will pop off that epoxy and it'll pop off from the outside typically so you want to make sure you have that all cleaned up you might be able to take an exacto knife if you have any bubbles in there so you're going to put your clicker end in you're going to put your uh, ink in your little spring and then the cap There you go. So that's how you can do a pencil really quick with um, just vinyl and a little bit of um, see-through glitter. Uh, you can also uh, use a chunkier glitter if you'd like, but it's going to need more coats. I recommend the white curl dust from glitter on the golf you could possibly try neverland i can try that next it's a little bit bigger of a cut <clears throat> all right so that's how i do a pencil if i'm going to do a decal i would just measure um you can take a ruler and measure and you know so three inches would be the max length for this pencil um i would probably do it more like two inches and then you can use um a cloth clothing tape measure such as this bendable one or this retractable one um, and measure or the width around and decide on your height probably and um, maybe half an inch tall but i was thinking about putting like number one te teacher there make it kind of look like the number two pencil logo you can also um if you know the teacher's names you can customize the teacher's names on there too super cute um really fun easy way uh not a lot of painting needed and using the um zigzag fabric scissors really helped to make the little pencil shavings easier all right guys so if you have any questions just uh feel free to put them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them um let's see anything else <clears throat> If I was going to mail these, I would wait um, three or four days because just even putting them in the mail, they could get um, bubble wrap marks, things like that. So you always want to let it cure for the good um, three, four days, depending on your epoxy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a wonderful day and please like, subscribe and share our channel. We're trying to get, um, we're trying to get our subscribers up to a thousand this year in 2021 so thank you so much and we'll see you next time bye